In this podcast episode, we're going to be covering unhappiness, victim mindset, and motivation. My name is Charles Botenston. I come out with at least two podcasts a week talking about the ideas and thoughts that I had listening to other podcasts, other YouTube videos, and other books. Subscribe to this for at least two podcasts and one talking about God, everybody's favorite topic. So let's jump right into it. The first one is measuring and tracking, okay? I actually wrote this down because my coach just reminded me I have a triathlon coach and I have a business coach for real estate, all right? They both literally only talk to me about what I track. So my triathlon coach, it's how far did you go? What's your pace? What was your heart rate? What was your resting heart rate? What were your, say, sprints? What was the top speed of those sprints? When you're in uh, zone two, when you're in zone one, everything is tracked and it's called training peaks and I use my Garmin. I'm talking to my business coach. What does he talk there? What were your sales calls? How many did you make? Was it buyers, sellers? Was it for sale by owners? Was it for rent by owners? Was it expired? Uh, are they new clients? How many past clients did you talk to? Did you ask for referrals? Did you not ask for referrals? How much on uh, content did you actually post? Was it on social media? What kind of social media did, it, did you do? Everything is tracked. I track my sleep. I actually have to get a new aura ring. And the reason being is because the battery just went out. So I guess that's a good thing. Maybe on the company, maybe on me using it so much. But essentially, I track everything. And the reason being is that you can't actually improve anything unless you track it. That includes a relationship. How do you track a relationship? You have to have KPIs. You have to understand within a relationship, each person is completely different. For me, I don't care about gifts. You know, it, it doesn't really matter. I don't really care. I don't need words of affirmation. I don't, you know, if you're talking about the love language, I, I would say the only thing is like physical touch. That's it. That's really all I care about. You know, I'm having a bad day, rub my shoulders, whatever. I dated a girl. She loved to have notes, text messages, voice notes. In other words, affirming, affirming what I'm doing, that I'm thinking about her, whatever the case is. But hers was affirmations and auditory affirmations. I know some, I was, I was listening to, I think uh, Tom Ferry was talking about his wife likes notes, physical notes. So whatever you don't track or whatever you don't track, you're never going to improve. When I started tracking my sleep, I noticed how badly I was actually sleeping, how horribly I was sleeping. I was getting five and a half hours, four and a half hours of sleep. And then I started saying, okay, why am I getting four and a half hours of sleep? They have a little blog that you can listen or watch or listen to whatever. And it talked about, well, are you having food late at night? Well, I started to cut that out. Are you having too much sugar? Well, I started to cut that out. Are you having alcohol? I started to cut that out. Well, except for the last three and a half years where I went through a downturn. But in other words, if I want to get better in business, my coach wants to know wh where are you posting your social media? Let's track it. Where's your engagement? Is it good? Is it not good? Are you even doing videos? Okay. Are you even making calls? What quality calls are they picking up? Are they not picking up? If they're picking up, are you, are your sales scripts good enough? Are your conversations good enough? Are you charismatic enough? Are you actually asking for business? Are you actually going in directly for a business call or you actually care about how they are? So the first thing is if it matters, measure it. If it matters, track it. That's in anything, money, relationships, business, health, sleep, whatever. Number two, wise man speaks because he has something to say. A fool because he has to say something. We see this all over the internet. Someone has to say something, okay? You don't need a reaction. Nobody needs a reaction. Nobody needs to reply to something. Nobody needs their take on something. I, I see it all the time. What is your take on what's going on in the world? You know, to a celebrity or to somebody that's famous, which celebrities just stop... Stop putting them on a pedestal, pedestal, please. Just stop. Just uh, we're done. We're done with that, right? We're done putting them. Sports players, people that are in movies or whatever, they're not celebrities. They just happen to play a role and people watch them. That's it. Okay. Uh, don't even get me started. But along these lines, that was made by Plato thousands of years ago. Okay. So in other words, even Plato, <laughs> you know, Aristotle, Plato, Socrates, they're all talking about the same thing. The fool is saying something to say something. Okay. For me, I love to listen now. I was the fool for decades. At least I was the fool. I was talking about anything just to talk about it. I've been in so many conversations now that I think about it, being in real estate, you're talking to, you know, tens of thousands of people in my career and, you know, between a doorman, attorney, a banker, a lawyer, the buyer, the seller, other agents, just all these people, the board members, you know, the parents, the, the guarantors, just, there's so many people that you're talking to the appraiser. I can just go on and on the doorman. I already talked about, but the super, whatever. All right, Charles, get to the point. When you understand that there are people like the fool, you don't judge them for being the fool because they don't know. They don't know that they're the fool. They don't know. They're just talking. 
So this is something that I had to work on myself because I would be in a room with someone that was, say, socially more calibrated when I was in college or high school or out of college. In other words, they were more socially sophisticated, whatever you want to say. You know, they were cooler. That's the best way to say it. They were cooler. And what I noticed is that when I talked a lot, people kind of didn't respond at all. And there was my friends, it was more of an acquaintance, that talked very little. But all the girls wanted to listen to him. All the guys wanted to listen to him. And I'm thinking, this guy didn't even say anything. Like, what? He's on his cell phone. He's not even paying attention to these people. And that's the thing is that he wasn't being a fool. I was being the fool. I was the gesture. The gesture is the person that just, just always trying to entertain people. So work on that. Number three, this mindset thing is what you say matters because what you say creates your thoughts are also creation. Okay. So your thought becomes a speech or action. That's how it is. Okay. So even if you have the thought, I don't want to go to the gym. You had the thought, you don't go to the gym, but you don't think that the reason you didn't go to the gym is because of the thought you didn't go to the gym because you didn't go to the gym. No, no, no. You didn't go to the gym because you had the thought of not going to the gym. Okay. Your thought created your reality. Okay. Or as Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about your mind creates your reality and your reality creates, creates your personal reality. In other words, your personality. And if your personality is that I don't go to the gym or my personality is that I do go to the gym, regardless of how I feel in the morning, like me this week, then your personality becomes someone who goes to the gym. And that's what I posted on social media. I'm a guy who goes to the gym. Okay. And by the way, this is just consistent for this week. So it's not really part of my personality yet. It's just part of, part of my personality this week. So that's really the consistency. So this is the mindset I get to instead of I have to. Because when you say I have to go to the birthday, I have to make sales calls, I have to go to the gym, means that you are being forced to do it. But when you are saying I get to, you're essentially saying I have a choice and I get to do something. It's coming from a positive instead of the negative. Another one is a one I hear all the time. I should. I, if there is something that we could remove from the vernacular of English, it would be I should. People should all over themselves, as Tony Robbins or someone else says, is if you should do something, okay, I should make 2,000 sales phone calls. No, I am going to. Okay, I'm going to do this. I need to do this. Okay, no, I have to do this. No, actually, I get to do this. So you can come from so many different language when it comes to speech. Speech is creation. God said, let there be light. Speech is creation. If you are creating, seriously, for one week, listen to what you say. Listen to what you say. What do you say out loud? How do you talk to yourself in your thoughts? That is creating your reality. You know, I can't go out that girl because, you know, she goes out with cooler guys or guys that have more money than me or guys that are better dressed than me. Or, you know, I, I shouldn't make these sales phone calls because that person's like, you know, they have a lot of money and I don't want to pitch that person because they own an expensive apartment. You know, I, I can't like rent that expensive an apartment because I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to afford it. These are things I said. These are things I said. And the middle one, about going and pitching places that are worth $36 million, $38 million. I'm telling you right now, I still have a limiting belief behind it. And even though I said that, I don't even want to say that. That's how powerful it is. I don't even want to say I have a limiting belief behind this because that creates my reality. Every morning, this morning, not every morning, but this morning, I was saying, get rid of the lack, get rid of the negativity, fill myself with abundance. Obviously, I used God for that. Moving on, fourth one. Unhappiness is supposed to motivate you and not put you into a coping trance of alcohol, TV, and other sins. This is everything, especially for men, especially for men. Men, we fall victim to this all the time. I'm going to continuously harp on this because the data is real. Talking about bullet point number one, if it matters, it's measured, and the data is unequivocally, unequivocally, however you say that word, men falling into sin. Sin of gambling, too much gambling, too much pornography, alcohol, drugs, pot, laziness, lethargy, jealousy, not making sales calls, not approaching girls, not being the man, not going to the gym, eating like crap, eating too much sugar, staying up late on social media. All of these vices, all of these vices that your people back in the day, your lineage would be embarrassed by 
They would be embarrassed that you are doing this. I was thinking about this. So for the last three and a half years, you know, I haven't told anyone, but you know, I've struggled with something and it was tough, but there was a time that it was probably about halfway through the last three and a half years. So say beginning of 2022 and of 2021, say beginning of 2022, I remember this very specifically. And it was, I don't know who I was listening to. And they said, your ancestors would be embarrassed. It was some TikTok, some, you know, some guy, I don't know, but he said this just off the cuff. And I go, wow, if I actually think of my father, <laughs> my father would be embarrassed, let alone my grandfather who came over here, you know, great grandfather. And then they're sitting there in the mid 1800s and the British are taken away during the potato famine where one third died, one third stayed and one third fled of Ireland. And I'm thinking that's wild. They went through a famine where one third of the country was wiped out. So you have to think about your lineage. It is embarrassing. Some of the guys, the way that they walk around they're, they're, they talk like, hello. No, hello. My name is. Okay. I, I'm going to be putting out a lot more male content because I'm just, I'm tired of the amount of victim, which is the last one, victim mindset around everything. Well, women are like this. So that's why I don't have a girlfriend. You know, I'm not healthy because of this, or I don't have money because, you know, the state of the economy. The question is, are there men that are in shape? There's men that are unbelievably in shape. They're breaking all these records all over the place. Fastest mile, fastest 50, fastest 100, fastest whatever in high school and college. It's crazy. Are there people making tons of money right now? Yes, tons and tons of money, okay? One thing that I thought about, I'm on the subway and I look around and everybody's on their cell phone. So I start peeping around because I don't go on my cell phone when I'm on the subway. That's my time right before coming into work. It's eight something a.m. And I'm just sitting there, say eight o'clock and I'm looking around and everybody's, and I go, wow. Okay. Twitter. Okay. Well, you know, well, so they're looking at the news. What are they doing? Oh, Instagram. Okay. TikTok. Okay. Well, everybody's on their cell phone. Guess what's making money? Cell phones, cell phones, content, news, drama. That's what's making money right now. I'm not telling you to get into that, but there's a lot of people making a lot of money right now. A lot of people making a lot of money right now. All right. And unfortunately, it's an alcohol, which is a vice for men. So let me say this quote again. And I know this is going to be a longer episode, but I'm just instilled with the Holy Spirit right now, even though we're not talking about God. Unhappiness is supposed to motivate you to not put you into a coping trance. When you are unhappy, it doesn't mean let me pick up my cell phone. When I'm unhappy, it doesn't mean, oh, let's put on my PlayStation. You're 37 years old. Why do you even have a gaming console? Like I, I stopped playing at 11 or 12 and I started to grow up. What all these, all these men that are running around and just obsessed with sports, obsessed with sports. And it's crazy too, because is there unhappiness underneath that? Is there? Is there unhappiness for you to pick up the remote and turn on whatever series you're watching on whatever stupid streaming program is out there? And people are like, oh, you know, this is, you know, this is a little harsh. Uh, well, we need a wake up call. We need a wake up call because you're not where you want to be. And I'm not where I want to be at all. I'm 38. I'm single. I want to have children and be married. And I have no prospects for either. Okay. I'm in the same boat. I'm not saying I'm outside of the boat. I'm in the boat with you. So we're all rowing in the same direction. And it should be to a goal. It should be to a destination. Okay? So all of the times that I hear people saying, well, you know, listen, I, I give respect to the last guy. The last guy left a comment and saying, like, is it black and white? You know, obviously you're a little harsh. You come from New York and everything else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is that harsh. You know, when you look around and you see fentanyl's over 100,000 deaths, Okay, that's growing now. Suicide is increasing. You know, yes, it is that serious. It is black and white. We are trying to save lives. We are trying to get people out of unhappiness, which is supposed to motivate you. That's why it's there. That's that's how we were created. We weren't being created to be like unhappiness. Let's be un un let's be less unhappy by going on social media or gambling or 
watching a stupid TikTok, okay? Put down the thing, track your time on your phone. What do you look at on, on Sunday? It will send you a report. How long, you will be embarrassed like I was on how long I was on my cell phone, how long I was on Instagram, how long I was on TikTok. It was embarrassing. A 38 year old man on TikTok that long is embarrassing. That's embarrassing. So that's all I have to say on that. The reasons you don't get what you want is because you don't ask, okay? We only have two more. This is number five. I think it's number five. One, two, three, four, five, yes. The reason you don't get what you want is because you don't ask. People can't read your mind. They can't read your mind. I see this all the time on, you know, these these dating podcasts or, you know, a, a man and a woman who are in a relationship and they start a podcast. There was a couple that I just, I, I, I had to unsubscribe. I would listen to a couple episodes and I had to unsubscribe. Their communication is on the podcast. I'm like, well, what about the other 23 hours you live together? <laughs> Did you create this podcast to communicate on the podcast where you should be communicating off the podcast and not fighting on the podcast? Should you not be, you should be talking about the resolution of the communication that you had on the podcast and not trying to resolve it on the podcast. You you resolve it off, off the podcast and you talk about it on the podcast. But this this comes down to everything. If if you want business, you have to ask for business. If I'll give you an example. My father had not the ideal hearing as he aged. Okay. And I knew when we walked into a restaurant, my father would not be able to hear everybody at the table. So I had to position myself at the table. But more importantly, I would go to the person that was at the front, the maitre d', and I would go, hey, ma'am, sir, whoever was there. My father has not ideal hearing. Is it okay if we, instead of we do that, can we do the four top over there or the five top over there? And, you know, it, it sounds corny, but as someone who was a waiter at Olive Garden and West York Diner, that's what they're called. It's the four top, five top, whatever. So like, oh, this guy knows the lingo. I related to them. And I also asked nicely. And I also brought up a reason. It's not like, oh, can we get that table over there? They're like, huh? Why, why do you want that table? Listen, my father has bad hearing. And I don't remember one time where they didn't say, you know what? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why? Because they want the experience better for you. So if your dad has bad hearing, why are you going to a place that's right near the kitchen? It's right near the bar. Go into the corner where nobody is and we can talk about whatever we want and not offend anybody. And, and my dad could hear us. It's great. I cannot tell you how many times, uh, I'll give you another example. <laughs> I dated someone and it was, it was at a point I had to learn her communication because her communication was not asking. Okay. We would be on a, a road trip going somewhere, whatever. We'd be in the car. All right. We're traveling for an hour and a half, two hours. And say we're going out to Montauk. She would ask me, and I've, I've brought this up before because <laughs> ironically, my, my mom also does this, but the girl is dating. She'd be like, uh, do you, uh, do you need to go to the bathroom? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm good. But like the rest stop or whatever you call it off the freeway shows how much I drive. I've never owned a car in my life, but whatever. The thing off the side of the highway where you can get food and whatever, rest stop, rest station. And I go, no, I'm good. And we'd drive it by. And then within like 45 seconds, she would look at me and she's like, you know, I really had to. Why didn't you say something? Why didn't you say something? I don't, I don't understand this. Just ask. I would have pulled over. I don't care. She's like, well, you know, I didn't want to. And I'm like, no, we have to talking about the last one. We have to talk about what we want. You have to talk about what you want. You have to ask for what you want. Literally one of my things this year for business was one more, which is an Ed Millette book, which I don't think I did a book review over, but it is an excellent book. It's called one more. Go one more. And he's talking about his father. His father was an alcoholic. And his father, every single day, would be like, one more day. One more day sober. One more day sober. For us, it's one more ask. One more referral. A pretty girl, ask her out. You want business? Ask. You want a different table? Ask. You, uh, you know, even giving in drinks. I remember I was at restaurants my, and my mom would be unhappy with the drink. And I'm like, send it back. Get another Manhattan. She's like, no, it's okay. Listen, my mother, it's a little too sweet. Can we add in a little less vermouth, sweet vermouth, and a little bit more rye or bourbon, whatever? I think it's rye. You have to ask. Okay, this is this actually goes back to um, the last one, which is unhappiness or not asking is roughly the same thing because you're unhappy because you didn't ask. And it is discontentment, and it is a feeling that you must change now. And this is the last thing, and this is a fad. This is a fad. Is being a victim is a fad. 
okay? If you are in that camp for any reason, any reason, you know, I would start my own business, but I would be in a relationship, but I would get out of this relationship, but, you know, I'm at this job and it's the dead end job, but why don't you leave it? Well, it's the economy. Have you looked for jobs? No. Okay. Well, how do you know there's no jobs out there? Well, you know, it's the economy. You know, I, 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 I can, I, I literally cannot be around those people. Everything bad happens to everybody. Okay. That's how it is. That's life. And by the way, I think it was Dostoevsky or somebody, someone from the early 1900s, late 1800s talked about if we had a utopia, we wouldn't even know because there was no contrast. If you know, say it's only daylight, you wouldn't even know what night was. You, you just do daylight. You're like, wait a minute. What do you mean night? You're like night. You're like, I don't, that doesn't compute. It's also all the people in America right now that are just complaining about stupid little things. I'm like, bro, go to Fiji, go to Indonesia, go to India, you know, travel a little bit, travel a little bit, put, put your, put your privilege a little bit on the shelf just for 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Okay. You know, I love how people are like, oh, I travel so much. And then they go travel and they're like, oh, I can't wait to be back in the United States with air conditioning and ice cubes and service and not. Come on. Come on, people. Anyway, that's this week. I understand I'm coming away a little harsh. That's what happens when we're in the red light in the engine for a lot of guys out there. Uh, obviously, yes, I know that 25% of the audience is females that listen to this. It's, it's open for everyone. It's open season for everyone. But I'm looking at the 75% of the men that watch and listen to this podcast. We had great on the listening portion. And we actually had more on listening than we did on viewing. Okay. Maybe I have a face for radio. I have no idea. But I can tell you right now that we need to change this up by small, little, incremental steps. Okay. Bring it back to Jordan Peterson 101. Clean your room. Clean your room. Seriously. What is the state of your room right now? Is your bed made right now? When you wake up, are your clothes to go to the gym the night before? Is your work clothes out from the night before? Is you, Do you wake up and you go, wow, my place is a mess. My place is a disaster. Okay, you know what that also means? Your mind is a disaster. That's how I was. And that's what they're talking about, psychology. If your mind is crazy, you can't even compute to organize something else. And if you want to go with General McChrystal, I think that's who it is who gave the... Texas Longhorns, I was going to do this, but that's devilish and I don't want to do that. But for the, I think he gave the University of Texas uh, graduation speech many years ago and he said something very interesting that I take to today and I do every single day is make your bed when your feet hit the ground. You get up, you don't snooze the alarm, your feet hit the ground, you make your bed. Why? Win number one in the books. Win number one in the books. Don't go on your cell phone, don't snooze your alarm. Get out of bed. Use another alarm. I don't use my cell phone for my alarm. I use a dumb phone for my alarm. It's not connected to the internet and it has nothing else. It's like the iPhone Zero. Okay. The thing just goes, thrr, thrr. that's it. It wakes me up. My regular cell phone is across the room in my kitchen. Okay. So I'm nowhere near. I have to get out of bed. When I get out of bed, I make my bed. So if you guys like this, leave in the comments below because this is the kind of heat I'm going to bring. I know I mentioned in past podcasts that I'm going to be bringing up the Lord and the Savior, Jesus Christ. However, I am going to be doing that only once a week and maybe not even once a week. And there's a lot of books that I am really looking forward to reading. Positioning. I got one from my boy in, in London, England. That is right here from Arnold Schwarzenegger that he just came out with. So this is a book that I definitely want to pick up and read. So leave your comments below. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to be, you know, a Jesus guy that's going to be shoving it down your brains and telling you to do this because personal development, health, mindset, motivation, all of that can be traced back to number one, consistent, small habits every single day. So if you guys like this uh, content, leave in the comments below. Love you guys. Appreciate it. Any of the subscribes, send it to whoever you want. And we're going to be doing a, a little clips thing as well, where you can send this out to people that you know. And we're going to be sending some money to the person who makes the highest amount of money on the clips. So have a great day and we'll talk to you next week.